Good morning, everyone. So I'm uh, Jean-François Sambla from uh, Institut Polytechnique de Paris. Uh, I will um, now ask uh, Professor Varun from uh, University of Porto to share his screen for the next presentation. So Professor Varun, please. Thank, Thank you. you. So uh, good morning, everyone. First and all, I would like to thank the organization of this uh, webinar, uh, the European Association, the, the working group. Uh, thank you for the very nice initiative that uh, for sure will help in the explaining and uh, the changes introduced by the different uh, working groups and project teams in, the, in this uh, new version of the Eurocode uh, 8. So uh, I will start uh, briefly um, um, remembering uh, what was in the mandate that uh, we received as project team two coordinated by Professor André Plumier uh, in what regard the material dependent parts um, of the Eurocode 8. Uh, in fact, in our mandate, uh, it was quite strongly referred that you should invest into the simplification of the codes, be, making it easy of use. And for the particular case of the concrete section, the uh, concrete building section, uh, it was also desired the introduction of uh, a new section dedicated to flat slab systems. Apart, of course, from the consideration of all the comments and suggestions received from the systematic review by SEN members, working groups, um, and by the technical review. Um, uh, the first task that we implemented in the revision of the, the different parts of material dependent uh, sections of the Eurocode 8 was the reorganization of the, of the section. In fact, as you all know, the present version of Eurocode 8 uh, has all the rules, uh, clauses, and specifications organized per the utility class, while in the next, for the next generation of Eurocode 8, we have decided to reorganize all the sections per uh, type of element. This uh, allows us to reduce significantly the length of the, of the Eurocode, making it more clear and easy to manage uh, while the design is using for design their structure. Um, for the case of the concrete building section, we reduced the number of pages from 58 to 42, which was, in our opinion, a good achievement, considering also that we have introduced in this section new subsections, for example, the ones dedicated to flat slabs. We had also um, expanded some of the subsections, as is the case of precast among other uh, subsections. Um, in what regards the utility class, as for the old materials, we have considered for the concrete structures three utility classes, DC1, DC2, and DC3, as was detailed explained in previous uh, lesson, but also today by André Pomier. For the case of uh, reinforced concrete structures, the strategy uh, adopted was the uh, following. Uh, first, uh, and recognizing that the design for DCH, according to the actual uh, version of Eurocode 8, is quite demanding and was eventually in many situations difficult to implement in practice, we have decided to uh, remove, to remove from the code the design for this level, for this very high level of ductility. And so uh, for the three new utility classes, the strategy adopted was to align the highest level of ductility design, which corresponds to DC3, with uh, the actual recommendations for DCM. Basically, I mean that the behavior factor adopted for the design of structure for DC3, but also all the rules the design verification rules and also the detailing rules are pretty much aligned uh, with DCM. Considering also that, uh, at least for concrete structures, there was a huge jump from DC1 to DC3, we have introduced an intermediate uh, utility class DC2, which was pretty much inspired 
or we, uh, in the um, in the clauses and in the uh, proposal that was included in the ENV uh, of uh, 94 uh, document. Um, the structure of the concrete building section, Euro Code 8, is the one which is represent, presented here in the, in the screen. Uh, and in my presentation, I will basically follow the sequence uh, of the different sub chapters in, in the concrete building section. I will not give uh, the same level of attention and I will not comment in the same level of detail all the sections due to the time uh, restrictions. Uh, to help the reader uh, of this slide uh, to accompany the, um, the changes introduced, I have along my slides a symbol on the right side uh, highlighting uh, the clauses or the parts that were basically maintained from what is uh, actually present in the actual version of Euro Code 8, uh, the, uh, highlighting the changes that were introduced or eventually the new subsections, close formulas, or elements of introducing a new part with the other symbols. These are the table of contents of my presentation. So I'll we'll start uh, with the revision on the, what was done in what regards to structural types contemplated on the concrete building section, basically for the classifications of structures in terms of a frame system or a dual system or a wall structural system, the rules that were present in the actual version of Eurocode were kept, but uh, they were written in the in a pretty much different way in order to reach a more clear concept. Uh, a new structural type is introduced, namely the flat slab structure, in which uh, the flat slabs, uh, along with the columns, are defining the primary seismic uh, structural system uh, in which the resistance to lateral loads are depending, are depending on the um, slab column mechanism. The behavior factor definition has explained also before by André Pomier uh, is presented in the second generation of protocols in a different manner. Explicitly, it is defined dependent on three uh, behavioral factor components. Uh, and this will be discussed in more detail later on for the different structural types uh, uh, for concrete structure. The simple change that introduced here was the elimination of the, uh, of the factor that tries to reflect the prevailing failure mode. This was considered that for the tile walls, uh, normally this value tends to give one for the majority of the, so, of the situation, so it was eliminated for the tile walls, but this concept and this coefficient is uh, kept for the case of large walls. For the design of structures for DC1, which basically relies on the design on the rule based on the rules of Eurocode 2. Uh, the behavior factor associated is 1.5, independently of the type of structure, but also independent of the type of regularity. The, the unique um, re requirements which are considered for design for this one are minimum material properties, as will be seen uh, later on. Um, the derivation of the behavior factor for the different structural systems what pretty much aligned with uh, what is actually present in the Eurocode 8 version. Basically, the final value of the, Euro, of the behavior factor for the main structural systems like frame, dual, and couple walls are uh, the same. Uh, for the uh, redistribution component of the behavior factor, the values adopted are pretty much aligned with the coefficient alpha u divided per alpha one as presented in the actual uh, version of the code. A new, uh, new values of behavior factors are introduced for flat slab structures. Um, the torsional flexible system has also uh, presented by André Pomier it's not anymore uh, considered as a type of system, but the concerns are kept. And uh, for these cases, 
uh, instead of imposing a behavior factor for torsional flexible system, a reduction of the behavior factor is assumed. For inverted pendulum systems, the behavior factor assumed is the same. Uh, and finally, uh, there is um, uh, an important concern about the influence of interacting uh, measuring fields. And for those systems, for frame systems with interacting measuring fields, uh, uh, reduced values of the behavior factors are adopted uh, comparatively to the ones for the structures without uh, in fields. In what regard the limit of seismic action for the design for the different utility classes being briefly so um, uh, basically for the lower levels of lower level of seismic action index, uh, the design for DC1 is allowed for the intermediate level of seismic action. Uh, DC design for DC1 is only allowed for wall structures. Um, for frame structures, uh, design for DC2 is allowed only until the in, an intermediate level of seismic action, uh, while for flat slab structures, uh, design for DC3 is not allowed, and design for flat slab structures is limited until an intermediate level of seismic action uh, demand. In what regard the limit of drift uh, considering the significant damage in the state, uh, it is imposed a maximum of drift of 2% for all type of structural systems. And this um, new limit uh, will uh, help to solve many problems in design, uh, will help also to control um, the structural design uh, and will help to control also the soft story mechanisms in some cases. As explained also by André Pumier for uh, moment resisting frames, uh, the interaction the, with the fields that interact with response, other limits of drift are uh, present. In what regards material requirements, here basically the science introduced was uh, on the minimum concrete class to be considered for design for the C1, C2, and C3. It's not expected that this limitation will uh, constrain too much the design of structures according to this new generation of Eurocode 8. Regarding the local ductility conditions, what it is intended here um, is basically uh, control the required overall ductility of the structure, which is basically a concern that is kept from the actual version of Eurocode 8, and uh, assuming that uh, this overall ductility of the structure will depend on the ductility at potential plastic engine regions to guarantee this uh, ductility. Of course, there are requirements associated to minimum material properties, and this applies to all structural systems. But to guarantee the, uh, the required overall ductility of the structure, there are, has it, there were, there are also in the actual version of Eurocode, these concerns are kept for the next generation, but there are concerns in two directions. In one direction, in what regards the local uh, buckling of compressed steel bars in potential plastic image regions, um, to control uh, this aspect in the different sections for the different uh, structural elements, there are requirements, mainly in terms of detailing, that will control this problem. Uh, and in the other direction, uh, it is controlled also the plastic rotation capacity and ductility in all um, critical regions of the primary seismic uh, members. Uh, here, uh, the, change in, the change introduced is basically instead of adopting the well known rule that is present in the actual version of Eurocode, in which the ductility is calculated by a parameter that depends on the total behavior factor. Um, and following a, a strategy that is not aligned with the strategy following other parts of Eurocode, here it was decided to control this local um, ductility um, using the same formulation that is uh, actually included in part three of Eurocode um, 8. Basically, the, according to this new proposal, uh, what is controlled is the ductility demand 
which is um, compared with the uh, ductility at a significant damage uh, in state that for frames and walls is controlled uh, by the cord rotation. Um, as the man, it is uh, calculated at each uh, critical region, the um, uh, cord rotation at yielding multiplied by the behavior factors here in PD and has capacity to consider the cord rotation as significant damage in this state. For the cord rotation at yielding, I adopted uh, the well-known expressions uh, for different type of elements. And it's important to refer that those expressions that were that are actually in the part of the code 8 were moved to part 1.1 in order to be applied uh, both for assessment but also for design of new structures. Um, for the resistance in terms of, um, of cord rotation, it is assumed for significant damage in the state, it is assumed uh, a value that depends on the on the core rotation at yielding, but also uh, consider a portion of the plastic part of the ultimate formation. For concrete structures, uh, the portion adopted from the plastic, plastic part of the ultimate deformation corresponds to practically half of the ultimate plastic uh, cord rotation. And uh, in the quantification of the resistance in terms of, of the cord rotation for significant damage in each state, uh, there are values pr proposed uh, that, perhaps, uh, that are close to 1.3, basically. Uh, for the calculation of the cord, the plastic ultimate uh, cord rotation, are adopted the well-known expressions also actually presented in part three that were also moved to part one one with some minor uh, modifications. With this change, it is considered that uh, this is uh, an important step in order to uh, give to the designer the same formulation both for assessment and to design of new structure. In what regards the specific clause for beams, uh, basically uh, the restrictions uh, or the first the definition is maintained uh, in terms of the dimension, but also in terms of normalized axial load. The eccentricity, the maximum eccentricity allowed between uh, beams and columns is a bit relaxed. Uh, for modeling uh, and for the consideration of defective plasmas with, it is proposed a simple rule um, in order uh, to have this, the designer can have the same um, model both for vertical uh, load, but also for combinations considering the, the seismic design uh, situation. Um, in what regards uh, beam support and discontinued uh, vertical uh, members, even though it, this is uh, this discouraged uh, uh, strategy, uh, the section was adapted, uh, was rewritten uh, here and there just to uh, be aligned with the possibility that is treated, uh, uh, and it was also well explained by André Pumier, considering the transfer zone. In what regard the design action effects for beams, uh, in particular for shear forces, uh, the rules that are present in the actual version of the codes were kept, uh, but uh, they were written in a different manner uh, with new figures, new expressions, but the concept and the concerns are basically the same. The unique change that was introduced in this uh, second generation of Eurocode 8 was a um, slight increase in terms of the overstrength factor for DC3 uh, and also for DC2, considering this is a new ductility class. Um, design for bending and shear relies on the rules of Eurocode 2 with the changes that were introduced uh, meanwhile. Uh, in what regards the detail in, for local ductility in beams, the length of critical region was kept. Uh, for minimum reinforcement uh, in beams, uh, the expression that is actually present in the actual version of the is kept, 
but it is introduced a, a simple table that allows the designer to easily identif identify the minimum reinforcement ratio function of steel and concrete grade adopted in design. For the maximum uh, tension reinforcement ratio, uh, and based on the parametric analysis, it was derived a new table that is pretty much uh, aligned with results given by the expression that is actually present in the Eurocode 8 uh, version. Uh, and uh, in using this table, designer can choose or can determine the maximum uh, longitudinal reinforcement in beams, of course, function of the steel concrete grade, and but also function of the ductility class uh, considered in design. And as can be seen, uh, being much more simple, the values given by table, uh, the concern on the balance and dis balance distribution of steel in beam sections is uh, kept. In what regards the spacing of hoops in critical regions of beams, basically the, for DC3, the rules are aligned with what is present in DCM, but the new rules are introduced for the case of design for DC2. For columns, um, also the uh, definition of columns are kept, both in terms of geometry and also in terms of normalized axial load. Uh, the minimum cross-sectional dimensions criteria is kept, but new values are advanced for the case of DC2. Also, as presented by André Pomier, here uh, there is a, a novelty in what regards the design oh, of yeah. axial force. Um, in fact, uh, it is recognized that in some particular situations, the amplification of the actual load uh, associated to the redistribution of forces uh, should be considered, and so the axial load to be considered in design uh, should be magnified. For the case of reinforced concrete, also the value adopted is two for the component axial load resulting from the seismic action. Um, in what regards the design shear forces, here again, the capacity design principle present in the actual version of Euro code is kept. New figures and formulas are presented, but the concept are the same. The overstrain, overstrain factor for columns is also kept. In what regards normalized, normalized axial force, the limit values are uh, slightly uh, changed. But it's important to refer that with the new definition of the axial force for design, eventually, here there are some uh, implications. Even though the limits are so high, are pretty much high, eventually, do not control the design in the majority of the structure. Uh, in what regard to detailing for local utility in columns, the minimum and maximum reinforcement is kept. It is introduced a new rule as the minimum diameter of longitudinal bars in columns of 12 millimeters, which is also, I will say, not a big chance also because in practice, eventually this rule is tends to be adopted. For all the other rules, I will skip because they are basically kept. For the transversal reinforcement in critical regions of columns, uh, new values are advanced for DC2. For DC3 are kept, values present previously in DCM. Um, for the this maximum distance uh, between consecutive longitudinal bars engaged by hoops in columns, also the rule is kept for DC3 and new values advanced for DC2. The same for the minimum mechanical volumetric ratio of confining hoops, novelties for DC2, the new values. And also to clarify some doubts that uh, some that could appear in this quantification of the norm of the mechanical volumetric ratio of confining loops in situations of uh, section with a similar amount of reinforcement in the two main directions. The, it is proposed this format that basically assumes the minimum of both directions. Jumping now to the section dedicated to design detail of beam column joint. This section uh, 
present uh, in fact uh, some changes. Uh, it is now specified also for DC1 a minimum reinforcement in, in the joint. For DC2 and DC3 uh, also is kept, has minimum um, reinforcement in the joint, the reinforcement present in the critical regions of columns framing into the joint. Um, the adoption of at least one intermediate bar between corner bars of section that is also present for columns is adopted also in bin column joint. Uh, and uh, it is introduced an explicit calculation or verification of the capacity of joints, but in this case only for DC3. Uh, the model adopted is a model recognizing um, the literature, it's a model which is a bit complex but uh, efficient, and it's a model that is also um, adopted not just for design of new structures but also for the assessment. This model is included in part 1.1 of Eurocode 8 and uh, that I will explain briefly in the next uh, couple of slides. This model adopts uh, an iterative uh, procedure that searches for the inclination of the compression field in the joint that maximizes the shear resistance. Uh, the shear force acting to the joint is um, dependent on the reinforcement on beams generating shear, is dependent also on the shear coming from the column above the joint, and the shear resistance of the joint is calculated based on the axial load from the column above, but also on the geometrical conditions of the beams and columns framing into the joint, and finally, on the reinforcement uh, present in the core of the joint, vertical and horizontal. The verifications done uh, in this model are basic two. First, the resistance uh, of the joint, assuming that reinforced at first cracking, should warrant the demand. And in the second stage, the resistance of the reinforced uh, joint after cracking should also resist the demand. Um, as I already referred, the methodology is an iterative procedure, but the, in the same part 1.1 of Eurocode 8, simplified proposals are advanced, first for the estimation of the inclination of the compression field, but also other simplifications are assumed as can be verified in part 1.1. In the part 1.2, and for the case of being column joint uh, in new structures, and based also on a parametric analysis and under certain conditions in terms of limitations of uh, normalized axial load uh, received by the joint, and also under certain limitations of the dimensions of beam and columns framing into the joint, it is proposed a single table with um, values of minimum horizontal reinforcement ratio in the joint, depending on the type of joint, interior or exterior, depending, of course, also on the concrete and steel grade, and finally, depending on the amount of reinforcement generating shear in the joint. Jumping now to the tile walls, uh, the definition is kept in the next generation, for the next generation of Eurocore 8. Uh, the, concern, the concerns that were imposed at the base of the wall where the plastic is inspected is extended for particular situations in which there is a strong reduction of the, of the um, wall along its height. Uh, in what regards the minimum thickness of the web, uh, the concept is kept, but it is introduced to the new parameter or new uh, demand that imposes as minimum thickness uh, a value uh, which is related with the length of the wall. I will jump some slides. In what regards the flexible resistance of the wall, um, the envelope adopted for design, um, in terms of the construction of this envelope, the strategy is kept, but the values are um, uh, modified. In fact, uh, in the construction of this envelope, it is assumed that the base uh, the resistance of the wall at the base magnified by a um, general overstrength moment that is assumed uh, has 1.2. Uh, 
uh, but then the construction of the envelope follows the rules that are present in the actual uh, version of the code. And of course, for the uh, for the first portion of the wall, uh, the, this capacity is uh, or should be guaranteed uh, for a length of the wall, for a height of the wall considered consistent first with the critical uh, length of the, of the height of the wall, but also with the inclination uh, of the strut assumed in the verification of the wall uh, in shear. In what regards the design envelope for shear, uh, here also some changes are introduced. It was recognized in different works uh, available in the literature that um, the actual uh, expressions and formulations presented in the actual version of Eurocode 8 should not be always on the safe, on the safe side. So um, it was adopted uh, uh, this proposal which basically uh, determines the envelope of shear forces based on the shear force uh, diagram obtained from the first mode, magnified um, with the value given by this expression. Um, for the case of design of DC2, alternatively to this formula that gives the shear magnification factor, it may be assumed uh, a, a magnification factor equal to the behavior factor. For, du for dual structures, again, the, the envelope is constructed in the same manner as in the actual version of Eurocode 8, but the shear magnification uh, questions assumed should follow these expressions uh, referred before. Now, in what regards the resistance, basically, uh, the, this part of Eurocode uh, redirects the designer to Eurocode 2. Um, in terms of limitations of normalized design axial force, here the values are slightly adapted, including a new value for DC2. In what regards the calculation of the shear resistance, again, the designer is redirected to Eurocode 2 in order to, to, to use the same formulation for aircraft design, but also for other uh, combinations. Uh, minor changes are introduced in the calculation for the seismic demands, and those uh, changes are included in part uh, uh, one one. Um, basically, the great advantage of this uh, change is that the general approach uh, for the shear design can be designed, can be adopted for design uh, according to AC2, but also according to uh, seismic design scenarios. For the height of critical regions, these pressions are kept. Um, for the length of boundary elements in the tile walls, here the process is much more simplified. The, the proposal presented in this uh, draft, in fact, it is a simple calculation. Uh, I will jump some of the aspects. The, the rules for the definition of thickness of the boundary elements are kept, presented just in a different manner. In what regards detailing for ductility, here, uh, important changes were introduced, but uh, mainly uh, looking for a simplification. Okay, and in fact, it is assumed that uh, in this current version of the draft, uh, the rules or provisions for the different elements between columns and walls, but particularly for walls, are much less complex than uh, the rules present uh, for detailing in the actual version of. Uh, Eurocode. Excuse me, Professor Varon, we, we yes. only have two minutes left, approximately. Really? Oh my yeah, God. two. Thank so, you. Okay, I will jump some uh, of the information I have presented. In any case, I will leave the presentation for the uh, per, for the interested persons in this uh, in this uh, webinar. So there is um, the section. Uh, for, there is a new section dealing with more details of aspects related with openings uh, in walls, uh, advancing uh, new rules for the limitation of the dimensions of these openings, and also advancing new rules for minimal enforcement uh, in these uh, critical uh, parts of the wall. For large walls, I'll jump. So there are not too much changes in the large wall section, just a new indication on this on the uh, on the model to be adopted 
for nonlinear static analysis or la of large roles, and particular attention is also given to the openings uh, in this type of, uh, of walls. The flat slab section is a new section introduced in this uh, chapter. Uh, in the development of this section, uh, we are based basically on the available international codes. We have tried also to align all the clauses with the strategy, nomenclature, and the rules present in the Eurocode 2. And of course, we have considered also the limit information available in the literature in terms of uh, research output. Um, in the section, there are uh, some uh, simple rules to control the geometry of the flat slab, namely in terms of its minimum uh, thickness. Uh, in, for the case of wafer flat slabs, there is also an imposition of a minimum uh, portion of the slab that should be uh, solid. Uh, some concerns also regarding openings, uh, especially in the vicinity of the support. Uh, for modeling of flat slabs, there are two uh, possibilities. For the case of uh, modeling adopting an equivalent frame uh, system, there are rules uh, included in this draft for the definition of the equivalent beams, both in terms of geometry and also in terms of reinforcement. But for the situation in which the flat slab is simulated with plate models, it is also considered that uh, in the model we should advance with um, a stiffness corresponding to the cracked uh, slab. And for the flat slab system and the earthquake demands, it is assumed that the crack uh, stiffness should be uh, approximately 25% of the corresponding and cracked uh, stiffness. Uh, for the reinforcement, both at the top and, uh, and bottom uh, surface of the slab, it is assumed that the reinforcement corresponding to the full uh, demand in the slab should be concentrated in narrow uh, support strips uh, developed uh, between uh, adjacent columns. These are the rules also proposed for the definition of the dimension of this support strip. Um, uh, there are minimum requirements in terms of reinforcement, uh, both at top and bottom uh, levels of the support strip in the slab, and those minimums depend on the reinforcement calculated in the slab close to the support. There are also minimums in terms of reinforcement in the middle strips between uh, support strips. Um, another important concept is that um, the quantity of reinforcement corresponding to the moment transferred from the slab to the support, to the vertical support, should be concentrated in an even more narrow uh, width of slab corresponding to this effective slab width. And this applies both for internal and external columns. Uh, an important concern in order to avoid progressive collapse of the slabs is the quantification of the well-known integrity reinforcement. Uh, the definition that was included here in the draft of the code was based on the model code. These are the expressions for the quantification of this uh, integrity reinforcement slabs, and these are the detailing rules that should be adopted by the designer. Uh, in terms of punching shear resistance, are kept the concepts present in the Eurocode 2 in terms of control perimeter and shear effective depth, and the verifications pretty much follow the strategy uh, adopted in the Eurocode 2 with specific uh, adaptations for the case of seismic design. In terms of uh, reinforcement, in the punching shear reinforcement, uh, there are advanced also some simple rules in terms of minimum spacing. Uh, and uh, the other rules presented in the Eurocode 2 are also adopted here, but uh, inclined bars or bent up bars are not recommended for the case of uh, uh, earthquake design uh, of these flat slab systems. In terms of anchorage and laps, 
uh, most of the requirements present in the actual version of Eurocode 8 were kept. But uh, for the anchors of reinforcement on beams, um, and it was also done some parametric analysis, uh, starting from these expressions present in the Eurocode 8. These expressions are, in fact, uh, kept, but uh, only uh, the only chance introduced was uh, slight changes in the uh, overstrength factors considered both for interior and exterior um, joints. Uh, as al an alternative of these expressions, uh, are include is this included a table, a single table that can allow easily to determine the maximum diameter of the reinforcement allowed in each joint, depending on the location of the joint, being interior or exterior, depending, of course, on the steel and concrete grade, uh, and finally, depending on the ductility class considered in design. For the situations in which uh, the expression before is not, or the, the criterion before is not satisfied, it is kept the alternative of these additional measures to guarantee an adequate anchors. For laps uh, in mechanical couplers, um, these causes are slightly changed, uh, trying essentially to clarify and to help the designer into the definition of the option to be taken. In what regards to transverse reinforcement in lapse zones, the rules are kept. For diaphragms. Sorry, uh, Professor Varun, we, we should move to the conclusion because okay. we ha only have five minutes left for the question right now. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Thank just you. to conclude, just to say that for diaphragms, the principles are the same, as referred also by André Poumier. Uh, the only challenge is that uh, in the design of the diaphragms, uh, the overstrength should be considered. For precast uh, concrete structures, um, this section was. Uh, in fact, uh, pretty much developed with a new table for the behavior factors in line with the casting plate structures and specific rules were advanced for analysis, taking care essentially on aspects regarding plate eccentricities, joints, in plane flexibility of floors and roof systems, and uh, particular care is uh, taken on rocking and interaction with main structure of panels. Uh, with this, I conclude. I'm sorry that. Uh, I extend too much my presentation, but I hope that it may help all the listeners to better understand what was done in the case of the chapter of uh, dedicated to concrete structures. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, several questions. Uh, one from uh, uh, Joseph Pace, from a uh, uh, technical director at Gray Tech. I would like to know how is applied the KW coefficient for large walls behavior coefficient? Wonderful question. So basically, the expression is and the formulation is precisely the same. It is adopted nowadays in the actual version of Eurocode 8. Uh, thank you. There is also a question by Sebastien Semelain, expert at te technical direction at Socotec. Um, in, he noticed a distinction between two resisting uh, horizontal force systems, large walls and coupled walls. He would like to know, uh, does that imply that large walls cannot be coupled? Uh, in fact, those type of ecosystems has a very different behavior. So the rules for the design and details are very, very different. So the coupled walls are uh, relies the, the behavior and sector structure more on the dissipation, on the formation, on particular uh, critical regions, while large walls have a very different uh, behavior. But this, um, in this uh, new draft of Eurocode 8 for the second generation, not change was introduced. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a second question by Sebastian Semelain about the values of uh, S-alpha 475, but Professor Plumier already answered about that, uh, saying that the maps of seismic hazard will be updated in the national annex uh, for each country. Uh, the final question by uh, Manuel Gomez from Cain uh, Engineering in Portugal. Uh, when is expected that the second generation of uh, Eurocodes becomes mandatory, replacing the current version? Wonderful. Maybe I'm not the, the person that should answer this question, but 
uh, ambition is in 2028, let's say, uh, we expect to have the, the, the second generation approved and adopted by countries, but eventually uh, André Pournier can give more uh, information on that if considered adequate. I don't know if there are other questions. So, so Professor Cumier, do you have any information about the... Uh, yes, I have prepared a small table which I can which I, I can show if I share my screen. Okay, so instead of a professor of our room. Yeah. So I did it rapidly, so it's not perfect, but uh, the, the, the phases um, uh, <clears throat> this one. So part one one and part five have been submitted to official SEN inquiry mm -hmm. from September to December last year. And the document following the corrections and so on and so on will go to formal vote in, uh, ready for formal vote in March 24. For, for buildings, for bridges, you see uh, inquiry will be from March to May 23 and uh, ready for formal vote in September 24 and for buildings so silos and assessments so one part one two part four and part three the inquiry phase official inquiry phase will be from September to December 23 and the, the document will be ready for formal vote in March 25 now, once a document has been uh, approved and voted, uh, there are the following phases, which is the finalization of translation, editing, and then development of the national annexes. So the estimation, as uh, Professor Varun mentioned, is the Euro new Eurocode aid in operation for 28, which is uh, still a long way to go. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. So we have to move to the next presentation by uh, Professor Landolfo from uh, University of Naples.